Oh, Delaware Democratic Senator Chris Coons, who serves on the Foreign Relations Committee and, of course, has spent time in Kiev and uh, knows very well what is going on there. Senator, this, of course, has been the fear of NATO countries and the president since the war started, that they had to make sure this did not involve NATO. And at this point, we can see how possible, how likely it is even for an accident to occur one way or the other, especially with this carpet bombing and with Ukraine using these old Soviet-era missile defenses. Andrea, that's right. Uh, as you said, just in the most recent conversation you were having there, President Biden has once again shown um, his steady hand, his measured leadership. His response to this potential crisis um, was to make sure that we did the research, the investigation, to understand what had happened, um, to make it clear that we strongly support our NATO ally Poland, who's been so critical uh, to both welcoming millions of Ukrainian refugees and providing uh, the base, the logistical support for flowing uh, military support and assistance into the Ukrainian armed forces. We will strongly defend Poland. But we will avoid a needless provocation. And in this instance, and I suspect the upcoming uh, press conference will confirm these details, um, measuring our response was the right path. We need to avoid an accidental or unintentional conflict here. And Russia's brutal and ongoing and unjustified invasion of Ukraine continues to be incredibly dangerous. There have been more than 100,000 casualties by General Milley's estimate on both sides, tens of thousands of Ukrainian civilians who have been injured or killed. And the United States and our NATO allies are critical to Ukraine's success, to their ability to push back the Russian occupiers and aggressors. And I am so hopeful, Andrea, that in the next few weeks here in this lame duck session, Congress will again support President Biden's initiative and authorize an appropriation of additional funding for Ukraine's fight. Now, Kremlin Press Secretary Dmitry Pesk is, uh, Peskov, as I was just saying, praised the U.S. restraint for not jumping to conclusions, but called the reaction to this blast another hysterical, rabid, Russo Russophobic reaction from Poland. What is your take about the way that these NATO border frontline countries are reacting to losing, losing civilians, two people dead, and a blast of undetermined origin? Look, I think um, Russia started this war, Russia is continuing this war, and Russian aggression is continuing to harm um, hundreds of thousands of people, uh, not just in Ukraine, but indirectly around the world. Um, they have caused a, a global crisis in terms of food and fertilizer prices. Um, they have caused a flood of millions of refugees uh, to a few dozen countries out of Ukraine. Um, so, frankly, um, while our response, particularly President Biden's response, has been measured, uh, you can hardly blame the Poles um, for being very anxious about Russian missiles raining down on westernmost Ukraine and the real threat that they pose. Um, in the end, if it turns out that what happened here was a Ukrainian air defense missile intercepted a Russian missile, and it was a portion, a piece of that Ukrainian missile that fell into Polish territory, we can't lose sight of the fact that it's Russian aggression that is causing this whole problem, this whole challenge, that is directly or indirectly the cause of two Polish citizens being killed. And President Zelensky was just on uh, TV there saying that they want access to the site because they want to see for themselves that this was actually a Ukrainian, re Ukrainian weapon, missile defense system. Uh, CIA Director Bill Burns went to Kyiv and was meeting with Zelensky yesterday or, you know, Tuesday, uh, this Tuesday this week. And also before that, in Turkey with the Russians just the day before. So is this about the nuclear warnings against Russia, which we understand he made? in that meeting in Turkey, or is it some backdoor diplomacy? Might there be some room for diplomacy here? Look, Andrea, my hope is that there is some room for diplomacy, but what's going to create the room for diplomacy is both Ukraine's continued success on the battlefield and the West's continued strong support for Ukraine. Eventually, every war comes down to a negotiated diplomatic resolution when one side or the other realizes they cannot do better on the battlefield. Right now, Ukraine is making progress. Russia is not. 
and I would hope that as the winter begins to settle in, that Vladimir Putin would recognize that withdrawing from Russia, ending his unjustified war of aggression against Ukraine is his best path forward at the G20, actually the G19, that is just concluding now in Bali, it was clear that Vladimir Putin is losing the world's support for his war to the extent he ever had it, and that President Biden is continuing to lead strongly on the world stage. Um, the world uh, leadership, the uh, most important economies and nations in the world are beginning to turn against Vladimir Putin and his aggression in Ukraine. That's a direction we should encourage. I, I caught, I, I assume we all caught the G19 reference to the fact that Vladimir Putin did not want to face the music and show up after the withdrawal from her son and the other setbacks he's experienced. Uh, let me quickly ask you about something coming up on the floor today in a test vote. Are you going to get enough Republicans to be able to codify, maybe by tomorrow, same-sex marriage? Um, I'm very hopeful um, that we've got 10 Republicans willing to vote for us to move forward on this bill. I've checked in with a number of colleagues and friends about this. Um, this bill, should we be able to get it to the president's desk, has important religious liberty protections that have been embraced by a very broad range of folks concerned about this issue. Um, from the Human Rights Campaign and the ACLU and GLAD to uh, the Latter-day Saints, uh, Seventh-day Adventists, a whole constellation of theologically conservative religious uh, groups who have weighed in and said they would be comfortable with our moving this bill forward. Um, there's folks who've done some great work on this, in particular uh, Senators Baldwin and Cinema in my caucus, um, Senator Portman and others have been helpful in the other caucus. I think we should be able to provide um, legal protections that respect the most important traditions of religious liberty in our country. There's a lot of folks watching this vote. I will be working it actively on the floor in support of the colleagues I just mentioned, and I'm hopeful we'll get there by tomorrow.